What's up, guys? In today's episode, I go over what is quite possibly the worst overdrive pedal in history, the EVH 5150 overdrive. Stay tuned. What is up, you guys? It's your boy, Luis Torres, and I am in the new studio. Things have been taken down. Things have been moved around. Um, this space is a little smaller than the uh, last space. Uh, so instead of space for four, I actually have space for four cabinets, uh, but I decided to have one section just as storage so I can literally just mount all my guitars up here along with a bunch of heads on the side. Uh, so it's been a lot. I have an office that's over here on this side and behind the camera, there's actually a space that, that's just like this uh, that I'm going to do over. That way I can have my little uh, fireside chats with Luis Torres. Ah, you're old school if you remember when I used to do those. All right, so the EVH, 5150 overdrive pedal. Um, so I ran it through my Moore tube engine, which is a 20 watt power amp only. So this pedal is apparently the blue channel in the EVH 5150. Um, I have an EVH 5150. This does not sound anything like the blue channel. I've used the, and I have the EL34, I've used the 6L6 version, I have a PV5150 and a PV6505. This does not sound like any blue channel on any Eddie Van Halen amp that I have ever used. Uh, that being said, uh, I use it as a preamp, and if you do some research, this can be used as a preamp, and it's absolutely terrible to run as a preamp. So I quickly learned after I kind of bashed this pedal, I had a lot of guys, and it's funny because, <laughs> yo, I had guys that absolutely love it, right? So, so bear with me. And I couldn't understand how these guys like this pedal. Keep in mind that a lot of other guitarists that I've spoken to have used this pedal through the effects loop on whatever amp that they're using. In that case, they're using it as a preamp pedal, which is exactly one of the ways you can use this. So I had guys sending me videos like, bro, like literally in their videos, they're like, bro, listen to this. And it is a chug fest. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing differently than what I did? Because I ran it as a preamp pedal and they were like, don't run it as a preamp pedal. You kind of want to run it in two different ways, right? So one was you can use it as a clean boost, using it through any dirty channel that you run it through. Or you can use a clean channel and run it as a distortion pedal. In fact, someone today said that this pedal is completely mislabeled as an overdrive. It should have always been uh, a distortion pedal. And I decided I'm going to quickly set up and listen, these things are going to eventually climb significantly higher. That's, that's just a third tier. <laughs> you guys know me, you know, I literally have, you can't even see the Mesa sign up there. Hold on. There it is. All right. So, all right. So what I ended up doing, what I, listen, I knew that I could run it through my dual or triple rectifier. Um, but a lot of guys love the MT-15, and I love this head, uh, the clean channel. Not that I ever use it, but it's a perfect clean channel. Um, 
simply by just me doing research and you know reading what guys have posted uh that they actually like the clean channel so i'm like all right perfect uh so i decided to run this through the clean channel of the paul reed smith mt15 and utilizing the three band eq along with the presence okay that being said um <laughs> I have the base at zero and the mid at zero, okay? On the MT-15, I have the base at zero. I'm lying. I have the base at noon, middle at noon, and treble at noon. Okay, never mind. Um, but <laughs> that, with that, uh, you know, one thing that I found was this thing is so, focuses on such a, ridiculous low end that you literally have to turn it down to zero on the pedal. Uh, and I have the treble maxed out. And uh, on my MT-15, I actually have the boost uh, knob out, which is also the treble, which I never use, uh, but I have to in this case with this pedal. So I'm gonna be using my 1987 ESP M1 Custom with my Voodoo Custom Pickup Hellraiser A8 Limited uh, Bridge Pickup. Super shout out to Rich. He's absolutely incredible. He makes these these spectacular uh, pickups. And if you haven't checked out his website, I'll go ahead in the description and put a link right to his website. So let me go ahead and put this, plug this thing in and let's hear the difference. Okay, <laughs> so there you guys have it. Um, so I'll start off with my boy, Joey Cruz, out in Florida, who I grew up with in Brooklyn since we were little kids skateboarding in Sunset and Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Um, so I ended up getting this pedal and he immediately was like, bro, you're gonna love that thing. And I was like, okay, cool, I'm glad. You know, a few people said that it was going to be good. A few people said it was going to be terrible uh, and that I shouldn't have gotten it. So I hated it at first, went ahead and uh, posted that this is the absolute worst pedal. And it was, 
when I ran it as a preamp. And I probably should just quickly run it as a preamp so you guys could hear the nonsense. Um, but I'm glad that enough people, like my boy Joey, enough people whose playing I respect were kind of like, you did something wrong. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, let's go back to the drawing board. Um, so it actually is a great pedal. Uh, not one of the greatest by any means. Still King is the KSR series uh, without question. And, you know, everything else is just, uh, you know, it's trying to be a, a series. But this pedal, as long as you use it correctly, and I clearly didn't when I started, uh, or the first round, uh, which is why I felt like I needed to dabble with it first. And I was just like, oh, it actually is pretty good. So there you have it. The EVH 5150 is not a terrible pedal at all. Just understand, again, do not use it as a preamp pedal. Even though you'll read that it's a preamp, it is not a preamp. Don't believe me? Try it yourself. Um, you definitely want to use the clean channel of any amp that you have. Uh, and likewise, if you want to go ahead and use some low gain amp uh, and just give it a whirl and just see what that sounds like. I probably should plug my JCM 800 with it and uh, see how that sounds, right? Should I do that? I'm going on 11 minutes. Um, ah, for shits and giggles, why not, right? <clears throat> Let's see. All right, I'm going to switch speakers so you can hear um how it sounds so i actually have the preamp on the jcm 800 this is a 2204 uh from 1987 and you know usually i have to crank that thing to 10 or close to it uh, or use my uh two notes captor and use the attenuator uh with it so it can kind of get pushed significantly and also keep in mind that i have the hot mod version two in there, which uh, as opposed to having one uh, preamp tube, there's actually two in the gain stage. So, but I literally have it at like one.
okay, it actually sounds, I mean, I, I probably have to dabble with the uh, Marshall for a little bit, but it actually doesn't sound bad uh, using the 5150 EVH overdrive pedal with a 1987 Marshall JCM 800. So, should you buy the 5150? If you can buy it for 100 or less, yes. As long as you're not just going to run it through a power amp section, then you're going to hate it. It's terrible. All right, guys. Hey, listen. Thank you so much for watching. Again, huge shout out to Joy Cruz out in Florida. You're the man, uh, along with my boy, Jeff Centra, who, uh, believe it or not, uh, as, as terrible as I sound playing leads, that's the guy that actually got me into at least dabbling uh, with lead playing and soloing back around 1990, 1991 when we were kids. And he was in a band called Naked Mary um, in Brooklyn. And, uh, you know, when I started playing again in 2016, he's the first guy I reached out to. And he's like, lesson one. And that's it. And then, you know, guys like David Dressel from, Pens from Pennsylvania basically took over the next leg. And I am now like Steve Vai. Uh, <laughs> I know you laughed. All right, guys. Hey, listen, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Uh, sorry for the long delay. Dude, it's, it's been crazy. Bro, I played plumber today. Yo, I've never done any plumbing in my life because my older brother is a plumber. Yo, Edwin, I need some help. Okay. And that's it. It's as easy as that. Um, but I had to change a bunch of faucets and that sucked. And if you are a plumber... My hat goes, comes off to you. Um, it is <laughs> absolutely insane. It is crazy. And, you know, I'm 200 pounds and I'm kind of slender, right? You know, so I'm underneath my cabinet trying to figure out, trying to maneuver underneath. Dude, it was awful. And then the painting, dude, it's been in the walls and uh, it's been crazy. So thank you so much for being patient. Uh, I have a bunch of pedals that I need to get back to. Uh, Paul from uh, PLX, I have to run, I have to uh, demo one of his pedals. I have a bunch of pedals that truck driver Sean sent me like two and a half weeks ago that I have finally, uh, that I haven't been able to get to, but finally will. So stay tuned. I have a bunch of videos coming out. And again, thank you so much for being patient. You guys are awesome. And as usual, I will talk to you guys soon.